I'm absolutely sure that uh, we succeed better when we have both men and women serving for peace. And we have studies from the UN that proves this and I have my own experience where I see this. And it's in particular when it comes to situation awareness and intelligence. Women have other perceptions, we talk differently, we communicate differently, both with men and women, so that's one of the reasons. The second reason is a more practical one. We see that where we have both men and women serving, we have better protection of both civilians and in the forces. It's sad to see that we have many examples of sexual abuse, of, of different things that should not happen and they're not in, uh, within the UN standards. But where we have women also included in the forces, we see less of this. And the final part is that we also see that UN has better reputation in the societies where we have both men and women serving. And the big thing is that both men and women are affected by war and conflict. And for that reason, we also need men and women both to prevent, but also to handle and find the right actions to take to stop or uh, handle conflicts. Well, I think we have many, many stereotypes coming from Hollywood, from the movies. We have our perception of how uh, uh, an officer or uh, soldier should look like and what they can do. And some of the stereotypes I've seen is about the physical standards that many uh, are um, concerned that women are not able to do the job. But my experience is that uh, well trained women can, uh, can do as men can do as long as we have the same standards. Another typical stereotype is that women cannot address or communicate with men in particular societies. Uh, personally, I've served both in Lebanon, in Afghanistan, in the Balkans, in different societies. And, and I really felt respected as a UN official or as a NATO official or for other organizations I worked for. So I think that is a myth and a misunderstanding. In most, uh, in most conflict uh, areas uh, we are seen as representatives of our organizations more than men or women. Uh, so, so that's a couple of them. There are more myths also. I think, uh, for instance, I've heard that um, we cannot have women fighting or in risky situations because the men will be more concerned if their female peers are wounded uh, and uh, might be the case some places but again our experiences from Afghanistan in particular where we had uh, uh, forces uh, fighting uh, I, I, we can't see the big difference here but doesn't mean that it never is the case, but at least my experience is that there are many myths which, um, which are more myths than realities. Uh, first of all, believe in yourself. We all have challenges throughout our careers, but the career path they have chosen is, uh, is so interesting. Here you can really contribute to make a difference. Uh, and stand up for yourself. More important maybe is to support others. I think we could be the best ones to encourage it, each other, to empower each other and look at those who have managed. Uh, it's uh, tough personally sometimes, you have to sacrifice uh, but we also have to work on the organizations to organize uh, uh, it the way that it is possible to combine family and work life and uh, and to make a career for a woman even if you have small children for some time and such and that's that's possible I've seen that back home in Norway and I'm I've seen uh, many nations and forces uh, 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 developing in a positive way in uh, in handling this we need role models, not only in the top leadership, but we need leaders at every level that understand and promote this. 
not only leaders, we also need women in different functions. And a few of the key functions I have thought about from my own experience is that we need more female planners because those planning the operations have huge impact on the effects on the operation and they have to have a proper understanding on, um, on the conflict and, uh, and our actions. Then we need women in engagement, those engaging with the local population, with the actors in the conflicts should also be women not only to involve the, the local women and to understand them, but because we have other perceptions, we think differently in some manners, and for that reason, contribute in a different way. Well, both my own experience and what we see from UN studies, it's absolutely clear that it makes a difference in operations uh, to have women included. And I think that is what we have to uh, understand and to educate our personnel about. W what are the reasons for uh, uh, including women and raising the numbers of uh, women? And uh, working together towards a common goal. I think I would um, would ask people to be more curious and, um, and dare to try, even if they are reluctant to involve women. And I think they don't, then will see that, uh, that uh, a lot of what they can be concerned about uh, is uh, based on myths or uh, perceptions. And uh, what is vital when we have women, peace and security on the agenda? It's important that both men and women are in the audience. So every time I put this on the agenda in uh, Cyprus, where I served uh, until lately, I was very clear. If we have a seminar or a leader meeting on women's peace and security or uh, gender, I want to see both men and women in the audience because very often both nations or units have the um, we see that they, they see this as a women issue, but it's not.